Uh, hi, again, it's uh, evening, uh, February something or another, uh, the 12th in, in the UK. I'm with uh, clients of mine, colleagues of mine. Oh, is that a booger? Oh my god, no, it's the other nostril. Hmm. It's so disconcerting when you look in there. Uh, but the other night, I, I, uh, two nights ago, I got some sort of flu bug. And uh, I woke up about 3 in the morning, I thought, oh, there's something distressful in my system. And my stomach started grumbling and I started burping and I thought, oh, oh, there's something going on. And uh, I'm upstairs next to my host's bedroom. They've got a bedroom and I've got a bedroom. And their bathroom is right next to the bedroom. So I thought, well, I'll go downstairs uh, because it feels like I'm not going to be well. And I'll go downstairs because I don't want to disturb them. You know, I'm a really good house guest, except I'm a pain in the ass. But besides that, I'm a good house guest. And so I thought, well, I don't want to wake them up. And this is England. It's winter time, And so I did get downstairs. I got to the sink downstairs. And um, uh, what I heard the Australians call it a technicolor yawn, <laughs> right, into the sink. And it was a little upsetting. And so I went to the bathroom. And I was uh, talking on the white telephone, uh, you know, Ooh. Get it? The, that's a little Canadian phrase there, which um, I hadn't remembered in years. But I'm going through this thing, and I'm puking, and I'm uh, not feeling well, and I so I lay down on the tile floor, which is heated, which is not rare for England, but they've got the floor heating on. And at one point, I'm laying there, and the floor heating starts to disappear, so I realize it's nighttime in England, and they can't afford to keep it on all the time, so they've turned it off, which I thought was very wise, which it is, but kind of silly, but it's the way things are. But the point of the story is not that. It's not my personal misery. When I woke up in the morning, I was fairly certain that I had had a gallbladder attack. And fortunately, my hostess, Annette, uh, has had gallbladder attacks. And there were things that were so different from a gallbladder attack that I had to question it. But my mind, that sinister little voice inside your head, that kill or be killed little mechanism that wants you to believe that life is really, really bad, and by God, if anything's going on in your, in your world, it's the worst thing that could possibly be going on. And if you've experienced the worst, it's that again. Right? And so we sat and we talked in the morning. And she said, how are you feeling? I said, I feel like shit, basically. You know, I've gone through this. I don't feel well. Uh, and I think it was a gallbladder attack. It was so cool because she had been through it. We could make distinctions. Right? And we made distinctions to the point that I realized that what is true is my gallbladder is healthy and it has been healthy for months. Right? I've done a lot of work on it. By God, I've done a lot of work on healing my gallbladder and getting it to be friends with me. And it is friends with me. But the minute I got sick with something different, which there is this virus going around there, which is a whole different theory, right? My body is cleansing, but my body wants to believe the worst and most sinister and evil thing. Right? That I've got, oh my God, my gallbladder is diseased again. And it isn't. I had a virus or whatever causes those things, and I didn't feel well for a night. The next day I felt pretty good. A little bit back and forth as my body gets rid of it. But I just want to talk about that mind. And if you make distinctions, if you make clear distinctions as to how things are different, you'll see how things are different. www.micpperformance, noticing fixes more than fixing. Chi, the name of my book.